Hey guys, welcome again to Big Brother Niger Updates. Yes, that's what I call it because that's what it is. Giving you updates and of course my take on the current situations that are going on in the house. So if you missed the close-up task, then probably you should just go watch it somewhere. But the point here, and this is a highlight for me from uh, the close-up task because it showed me some things that I already knew before, but it just made it pretty clear. First, you were invincible. It seemed as you, it seems as though you never existed in a house full of chaos. I try to draw close to you at any chance I get, but the wind of destiny was never in my favor, so I left. Conversations with you always gives me joy. That's why I want you to see me for who I am, truly, and not a toy. Looking at those videos, you already know that white money is already in his own space. I mean, dude is in his feelings. I don't know what happened before this episode or before this season of Big Brother, but you can tell that white money is so into mercy and they have a good synergy going on. What I don't know is where this is going. Now, if you ask me, they are each other's strategy at this point. White Money is latching on to Mercy, trying to see where that will go, being that both of them are winners and they have huge fan bases. Each of them's fan bases can tune into this and make it beneficial for both of them. But I think Mercy will benefit more from this than White Money. But let's see where it goes. <laughs> Ilabae and Cross fought at the pool party again. And I'm saying again because it feels like Ilebae is just always caught in fights back and forth. It's pretty frustrating at this point. And what makes it even more frustrating is this. <laughs> So you can see crying, crying, crying. And at this point, it's pretty obvious that the housemates have caught on to the fact that Ilebaye is always playing the pity party game, the victim mentality card, and they are tired of it. I mean, the baby girl was crying and nobody even went to say, oh, what's happening? What's happening? Like, it's like, you know what? If that's what you're going to do, go ahead and do it because we're done. And if they're feeling this way in the house, I can only imagine what people are feeling outside the house people that are viewing it so i don't know whether ilabai's pt strategy will work till the end of the season now alex and Perry. alex and Perry's fight was something that came out of literally nowhere nobody saw that coming but it came next time i will just leave the mark on shozi where's shozi shozi Slap on and I go blow you for you. You go faint, no, 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 die. No, 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 no. A woman touches me, I will kill that woman. Yes, Streets. Yes, no bond that woman. Nothing, nothing, nothing. Me. I've mentioned this before, but I'm mentioning it again so that you can understand that Pere doesn't have any strategy. His strategy before was being the alpha male, you know, General Pere, the name that you people gave him. And now he's like, that's not really working. But how can we keep the general mindset? You know, how can they know that I'm the alpha male? And the next thing, violence. Violence all over. And they're calling me names that you know what happened. And it's not your last time. Are you hearing me? It's not your last time. Forgive me. The last time he punched the wall in an argument with Doing. I mean, I looked at his fist in the wall and I was like, Lord, if that hits Doing, you know Doing that is she's figure one before. If that hits Doing, she would just evaporate. But I'm glad that that didn't happen. But looking at the fight with Alex and Perry again, he threatened to kill her. I know it was in an argument and all because she said she was going to slap him. But how, how does I'll slap you and I'll kill you correlate? So I feel like he's literally grasping at straws right now, trying to prove a point. But since the point is more tilted towards violence, I don't think that's going to work well for his strategy and for his viewership at the end of the day. Now, let's go to Venita and Adekunle. I don't want to talk about these people, honestly, because it feels like, again, this is the only thing that they have going on for each other. But that's why I'm talking about it, because this is the only thing that they have going on for each other. You can tell that this ship is sinking. That's my point. Adekule was in the diary session talking to Biggie and was basically saying that he was hurt that Vanita told him that he was accessible to other girls even though he's with her. And he's like, I'm spending time with other people. How's that even a thing? But... At the pool party, though, 
Adekele was seen grabbing Venita's behind. Just take a look. Yeah, that wasn't a touch. That wasn't a, a feel. That was a grasp. You know when you grab it because you mean it. That's what happened there. And then Vanessa will go on and say, oh, but my kids are watching. Y your kids are not watching that one now, are they? Well, whatever the case is, you can tell that this ship is sinking, but both of them are holding onto it for dear life because they do not have any other strategy. So what do you think about all of these that I've said? Put it in the comment section. I want to hear your thoughts. And remember to like, share, and subscribe. Catch you later.